What's going on YouTube? This is Dre the Plug coming at you live with some more technical heat. And in this video, I'm just gonna highlight one of my friends who's actually an aerospace engineer. She go by Lauren the Savage. And yes, her last name is actually Savage. And like I said, she's gonna highlight her whole perspective on being an aerospace engineer. Let's get into it. Hey guys, my name is Lauren Savage. I am an aerospace engineer. I recently graduated from the University of Texas at Arlington with a Bachelor of Science in Aerospace Engineering, and I currently work at Lockheed Martin as an aeronautical engineer. Okay, so what made you want to jump into being an aeronautical aerospace engineer? What made you really want to get into those two as an engineer field? What made you want to take that route? So I decided to study aerospace engineering because my entire life I have been in love with space and airplanes. I used to spend like my childhood evenings staring up at the sky in the driveway, um, looking up at the stars, and that gave me so much hope for the future. Um, and so I wanted to go into aerospace so that I could not only engineer vehicles for the way humans get to other planets, but also so that I could eventually go there one day myself. Um, so I decided to do aerospace because aerospace combines aeronautical engineering and astronautical engineering, um, with aeronautical engineering being the aircraft and aviation side of the industry, and astronautical engineering focuses more on space travel and spacecraft. So aerospace combines all of them, and right now I am currently working on the aeronautical side of the industry. Okay, so you mentioned to me that you are a private pilot. You know, not too many people are walking around saying that they're a private pilot, so can you kind of explain what exactly do that mean? So a private pilot is someone who exists within the general aviation world. Um, you can't go fly for an airline as a private pilot. You need more licenses than that. But a private pilot license essentially allows you to be able to fly around on your own, to rent an airplane, and to take people with you on the flights. So I got into that when I was 17. Um, there are a series of scholarships that I apply for, um, which are readily available to the public. Um, a lot of people think that flying is a rich person's sport, um, but it doesn't have to be. And there are a lot of flight schools, a lot of organizations and clubs um, that you can check out, such as like the AOPA and the EAA. If you just Google those and see what they're offering, there's usually several scholarships per year that you can use to cover your training um, so that you can become a pilot too. Okay, so what would you say is the biggest benefit when it comes down to being an aerospace engineer? benefit to being an aerospace engineer in my opinion is that you literally get to design the future um, especially right now the way that things are going you can go into the space side you can go into the aeronautical side and whichever way you choose you're going to be able to make a lasting impact on future generations whether that be putting humans on another planet or designing the way an aircraft flies in a new way that we've never decided to make it work before um, aerospace gives you the opportunity to really make a big impact on the way that humans are. Because, you know, if you look back 100 years ago, flying was something that wasn't so commonplace, right? It, it wasn't even a thing that people do. And now you can hop on a plane and you can be on another continent. And so maybe in another 100 years, you can hop on a spacecraft and be on the moon. Um, and if you do aerospace engineering, you might get to be part of doing that and building the future. Okay, so what's something that you did not expect jumping into being an aeronautical engineer? So one of the things that I expected when I went into this industry was being able to be part of a program as a whole. So for example, when I was in high school wanting to study space, I thought, you know, if I go become an aerospace or aeronautical engineer, I'll get to be part of the entire mission planning, all the building of the entire vehicle, you know, every part that goes into it. And for me, that's what rocket science looked like. Um, but when you go into the industry, you basically have to pick a discipline. Um, and you can hop around into different disciplines. You don't have to just stick with one. But these disciplines you learn during your undergraduate career. So the different classes you take are the different opportunities you have to work within the industry. So for example, you might fall in love with propulsion or aerodynamics or structures. And that might want be something that you want to go into as a full-time job. And so in that job, you'll be looking at that piece of the puzzle as it fits into the whole program. Um, and so if you wanted to have a more broad sense of what I thought rocket science was before, you need to either be like a chief engineer or a program manager, which is something that you can do going into aerospace engineering, but it's a little bit further along in the career. So just be prepared to kind of dig into a discipline, dig into a few different technical disciplines and become really good at them before you can do the whole thing as a scientist. 
Okay, Miss Lauren the Savage, tell the people about how you know you tie in Instagram and YouTube and pretty much showcase your platform of doing aerospace engineering content. Like your Instagram is crazy. You have all type of different aerospace pictures, aerospace little videos here and there. Just tell the people what actually got you into doing stuff like that and where they can actually find you on YouTube and on Instagram. So my Instagram has become a place for people to learn about aerospace. Um, going into the industry, I didn't really know what to expect, um, just that I loved space and I loved airplanes. Um, but I hope to be a resource and a guide to people who are wanting to go into aerospace, whether you're a high school and middle school student or you're wanting to change careers again later in life. Um, and then even if you're not considering going into it, um, I really want to help people appreciate aerospace um, and to be aware of that part of the industry because that's not really something that's talked about very often. So my YouTube channel and the whole goal for YouTube and Instagram is to be a place where if you're already in the industry, I want to have high level kind of problems and concepts explained so that you know if you already have that STEM foundation, it will cater to you. But then at the same time, I want to be able to cater to everyone um, and have some more like higher level videos available that the general public will understand without any kind of STEM foundation or background. So I'll be posting YouTube videos on everything from different types of aircraft throughout aircraft history towards missions that we've done in space, future missions, um, what that means for us here on Earth. Um, and then of course, some of the math to figure out how it actually all works. So if you guys want to follow along, my YouTube channel is called Lauren the Savage. And my Instagram handle is also Lauren the Savage. So you should be able to find me through either one of those. So how has it been a woman in aerospace engineering? I don't know, like anybody who's a woman that's in aerospace engineering, I don't think about it. Yeah, there aren't that many women in aerospace. Um, in my graduating class, I think there were only just a handful of us. Um, in any class at any given time, there was maybe like 50 plus guys. And sometimes I was the only woman. Um, Sometimes it was difficult. Sometimes people were rude, disrespectful. Some guys straight up thought like, oh, you shouldn't be here, you're a woman. Um, you know, some, some people associate, you know, your looks and your gender with your intelligence, which isn't true. There's no correlation whatsoever. Um, and so, you know, if I could go back again and, or at least say something to a girl that wants to go into this, um, you know, be prepared to have those comments that you be prepared to, you know, be kind of stabbed in the back by some of the guys that, you know, um, but like, don't let it deter you. Um, you're going to do amazing. You know, just being yourself in this industry right now is changing the future of this industry. Um, and it's important and we need you. Um, and there are so many women who are in the industry who find each other. There aren't that many of us, but we find each other um, and we support each other. And so get involved. If you're in college in aerospace, join the Society of Women Engineers, join any club or organization you can find that is women oriented um, and kind of build your support system and your network um, and you will be okay. Just stand up for yourself. And if you need help, always reach out and ask for it too. That's important. So what is your typical day for like an aerospace engineer? So aerospace engineering looks different depending on where you work and what kind of department you work in. Um, like I said before, there are so many different disciplines across aerospace. And even as an aerospace engineer, you don't necessarily have to work on the aerospace side. You can work in something like quality or something like production or manufacturing, which can be many different engineers working together. Um, so it can kind of be diverse. Um, so some days you can be working in a hangar, some days you could be working at a desk for eight to 10 hours a day. Um, and that's something you want to make sure that you look into when you are applying for jobs because different jobs will have different environments. And some people really thrive on the shop floor. Some people really thrive in a manufacturing environment and some people thrive being alone in a laboratory or being alone at a computer doing analysis all day. Um, you know, you can sit and do design, you can do CAD, um, CATIA, 3DX, SolidWorks, those kinds of programs. Um, or you could do, you know, mostly paperwork, signing off on things, more like a program management kind of side as well in the project engineering sector. So those are just a few of the jobs that you can do with an aerospace engineering degree. Um, like I said, just find one that picks, or find the one that has the better work environment for you and that suits your needs. So how was the process of landing an aerospace engineering job? Like, will you say that it's easy? Will you say that it's difficult? I'm pretty sure that's pretty difficult. So with aerospace engineering, like any other engineering discipline, having experience really matters. 
Um, you can have a 4.0 and that's great. Congrats if you do. Um, but it really matters if you have an internship or some kind of other work experience that's relevant. Um, and so for me, landing a job in aerospace was not difficult at all because I interned for three and a half years um, throughout the last half of my education. Um, I hopped around from interiors engineering to systems engineering over to aeronautical engineering. Um, and because of that, I had been working in a professional environment for three and a half years. I knew how to do the whole professional um, lifestyle, everything like that. You know, when you get to the office, how do you send emails? How do you run meetings? I had been completely used to that. Um, and so when I was looking around for jobs, it was very easy to hire me because I wasn't so much an entry level as, you know, somebody who never worked in an engineering office. Um, and so that's something I really encourage people to go after because that's really making you a more valuable candidate. Um, and then another thing I want to highlight is having a LinkedIn. Um, a lot of people think that, you know, the old fashioned way is to apply for a job um, and then, you know, just see if you get it, see if you get a phone call. Um, but the way to do it now and the way that if you want to be really assertive about it, if you see a job that you really want, um, go on LinkedIn, find the recruiters at the company who work there, apply for the job, message people, make sure that your whole portfolio is up there and it looks professional. You've got a nice photo, you've got a nice biography. Um, really put yourself out there and start networking with people within your industry um, because you'll find that networking is far, far more effective at getting a job than simply just applying for as many as you can um, and just hoping for one. So if you really have a job that you like and you want to get into a very specific niche within the industry, or even if you just want to get into the industry at any point, you don't care what discipline you work in, um, networking is really important and it's never too early to start doing that either. Okay, so what skills do you actually have to have what you say is the most beneficial when it comes down to jumping into the aerospace space? So some of the most um, beneficial softwares that you can learn um, would be CATIA or 3DX if your university offers a course in either one of those. Um, some community colleges also offer courses in those. So if, even if you can't get at the university, you can always look for a local community college that offers a class. Um, as far as coding languages go, you might want to touch on MATLAB and Python. Um, those are two that are most commonly used or similar to other softwares that you'll see in industry. Um, and then of course you have your soft skills. Um, a lot of people disregard soft skills in engineering, um, but that is something that definitely needs to be touched on. Um, you know, you need to have the ability to communicate with people um, and communicate maturely. Um, you know, you want to over communicate, you know, I don't want to assume anything. Um, and you want to be able to work with different groups of people who have different backgrounds um, because you have to realize that when you're in the industry, you'll be working with people who have decades of experience um, and you want to know what you can get from them, how you can learn from them. Um, so don't forget your soft skills. They're really important too. Okay. So what are all of the different type of sectors, the different type of jobs that you can get into when you actually graduate with an aerospace engineering degree? Like, What's all the different routes? Cause I know for most cases, people automatically just think like NASA or doing something related to airplanes. Yeah, so NASA and airplanes are usually the things that come to mind um, when you talk about aerospace, but there is a lot more available in the industry to do um, than NASA or airplanes. Um, you can go work for an airline. Airlines always need maintenance engineers um, to make upgrades or to acquire them from manufacturers. Um, you can go work at an OEM like Lockheed or Boeing or Northrop Grumman. They're the people that design airplanes and spacecraft um, and a lot more than that actually. Some, some of them even do like submarines. Um, so it's very versatile um, and you can do that as an aerospace engineer. You can always work with uh, ships and submarines too. Um, and then you can also, like you said, go work for NASA, do commercial, or you can do space exploration, but then you can also go over to the commercial side. Um, and now we have companies like Blue Origin, SpaceX, Virgin Galactic, um, and a lot more little aerospace startups that are starting to pop up. Um, and they're manufacturing spacecrafts, they're manu manufacturing human, carrying landers, orbiters, all kinds of things like that. So, you know, it really is open up to what you want and what your interests are and what you want to do long term and how you want to contribute to the world. Okay, so before we just close everything out, I always say this at the end of all of my interviews, what's one thing that you will want a viewer that's watching right now, if they didn't take anything else from this interview, what's some advice that you can give to them? The main thing I want people to know about me and about everything in general and that we covered in this interview is that you don't have to be a genius to be a rocket scientist. You don't have to be a genius to go into aerospace. Um, I have had many failures. I had to retake two different classes. 
Um, my GPA tanked in my first two years, um, but I brought it back up above a 3.0. Um, and so I just want people to know that you don't need to be intimidated. Um, a lot of people start out in aerospace um, and then as the years go by, the classes get smaller and smaller and it's because of this big intimidation factor of, oh, I can't do it, I'm not smart enough. But that's not true at all. Um, intelligence is important, yeah, but your hard work and your dedication is far more important and that will get you way further. Um, so please don't be intimidated and come work in aerospace with me. And that concludes this video. Don't forget to comment like and subscribe it really do help my channel when it comes down to the youtube algorithm if you guys have any questions regarding anything just hit me up on instagram hit me up on the gram at dre the plug one two three and then also go check out my other youtube channel this is actually my second channel my first one was called andre classic cuts i basically go in and give tutorials about all types of different haircuts I actually show people how to do different type of things with the clippers that has never been done. And I pretty much go into detail as on why certain things happen. So definitely go check out that channel. Besides that, be on the lookout for my next content that's dropping. Be on the lookout for it because it's coming real soon. And I'm out. <laughs>